Hello and welcome back to Curiously Polar, the show about all things very north and very south. I'm Chris and there's Henry. Hey, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I am amazing today. It is the 9th of November 2020 um, and things have changed in the world, I think, I hope. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> they have. <laughs> Took a while. Yeah. But. At, least, at least that's what it feels like right now. Um, but this is the show about polar things and after staying in the arctic in the north for a long time um i think we're going to take another plunge down south today is that correct it is very correct yes and we tackle a topic which couldn't be better for antarctica and that's mm -hmm. penguins penguins that's i like penguin penguins where's your you used to have a penguin in the backdrop background that's gone it's gone. It's somewhere over there on the sofa <laughs> for the cat. Okay. That's okay. Oh, it's <laughs> the cat penguin. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the title says it. Three new penguin species discovered. What's that about? Tell us a bit more. I think it might be about three new uh, species of penguins which oh. <laughs> uh, were discovered. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected that from the headline. Okay. So so what are they? Where are they? Um, and... Uh, Take us by the hand and show us. I, I try to. So we all knew, uh, know that penguins are birds, uh, uh, flightless. They have flippers instead of wings. We know that they waddle um, on uh, on land instead of walking. Uh, we know in water they are excellent swimmers and um, amazing divers. We know that they can reach um, tremendous speeds, and we certainly know that they have this very distinctive black and white coloring that helps them to camouflage in the water. So from underneath, they are bright as the surface of the water when you look from the bottom to the top, and vice versa when you look from the top to the darker bottom, they also camouflage in with their black back. But how many species um, do we currently have? Do you know that? Have you an idea? No, not at all. Um, 10, 50, 500? <laughs> I have no idea. It's very close to anyway. all of it. It's uh, between <laughs> 17 and 19. <laughs> okay. Oh, well. it, it really depends on uh, which kind of authority you follow. Um, some say it's 17, some say it's 18, some say it's 19. Um, however, all of they include usually the blue penguins of uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, the amazing majestic um, emperor penguin, which um, breeds on the shelf ice of uh, Antarctica, uh, the, pe uh, the king penguins, of course, and uh, many other ones, including the Galapagos penguin, which is probably the only one um, north of the equator, depends on how picky you are but how come today we are talking about three new species that have been discovered it's not so much about heroic um explorations like in the old days when they discovered the first species um but i want to talk about the gen 2 penguin and that one just got firstly described in 1781 which is quite some time ago and was considered one species with two subspecies Subspecies, um, because we have a very huge um, distribution of Gentoo penguins, and we let's have bring up a picture. Some... You you gave me something to look at, and I want everyone to see. Yeah, we have too. the the website of the University of Bath, which yep. is actually um, the leading um, the leading author of that study actually um, is from that university and yeah we can see the two subspecies on that picture there we have one that's um, further south um, towards the Antarctic Peninsula which is um, the southern Gen 2 and then you have the northern Gen 2 which breeds uh, on the Falkland Islands and South Georgia and uh, further so more in the sub Antarctic Islands and that's actually the um, the um, the diversion between the two were just like one is breeding or yeah, yeah, nesting further north than the other and you can actually see a slight difference in coloring so the the north uh, for the north you go the less black the Jindu penguin appears it's more um, brownish but um, that was kind of the only thing it's it's not it, it wasn't really distinguished as two different species however now Scientists have taken some um, 
uh, deeper research and they actually went to a number of different places around Antarctica, including um, the subantarctic islands, and they have analyzed the genetics, they have analyzed the bone structure, and they came to the conclusion that we are talking about four different species instead of one species with two oh. subspecies. So they actually um, suggest that we have the southern um, Gen 2, which is breeding on the Antarctic Peninsula and uh, uh, South Shetland Islands and, and uh, the area over there, which is the the one which were already known. And then you have a split of the northern um, Gen 2 in three different species. You have one that's originating from the Falkland Islands, and um, we, we have a map in the video, so if you're just listening, I highly recommend just uh, swapping over to YouTube, and then you can follow us on the map. You see the, the Falkland Islands um, at the edge of South America, where um, we have one species. The other one originates on South Georgia, and so far it was thought that those two are the same, but the main indicator they have is that the um, Gen 2s, they are going back to the places, um, to their own breeding grounds. So where they're born, they are, they are going back for nesting and breeding. And they figured that they're not interbreeding. So the Gen 2s from the Falkland Islands are not interbreeding with those from South Georgia and the South uh, Sandwich Islands. And even further, we have the uh, Kerguelen Islands, um, which are at the yeah, southern tip of the Indian Ocean, pretty much in the triangle of uh, South Africa, um, Australia, and uh, Antarctica. Let me and move over here. So, um, so here's Africa on the left, Australia on the right, and right you in see the, the middle there. In the triangle there, exactly. That's a, a group of islands, and uh, you have a... Um, of course, uh, Gen 2 population there as well. And now it's suggested that this is also a distinct um, species on its own. And they are not interbreeding. They're traveling a lot and they have no difficulties to actually reach the other islands um, to find a mate, but they don't do. And that's kind of like the core definition of um, species is that they're not interbreeding. And this is pretty, um, pretty new and a pretty distinct um, feature and this is why those scientists just came up with that so now we have the scientific paper which got peer reviewed because, uh, before um, being published that means that other ornithologists have just studied the data they just looked into the paper and um, just considered it right uh, or good so it got published and now we're just basically waiting for those classification um, associations to accept or decline that because we have so, so, different so there's, classifications. A, there's a central authority or how does that come together who who, the, who says are who says it's a species who, who <laughs> gives that that green light there are a number of um, of, of those um, authorities and um if well we currently have the the issue that those three are are di different opinion so we have three different um yeah, taxonomies, if you if you like, um, one counts seventeen species, one counts eighteen, and one counts mm -hmm. nineteen. Um, it's not that easy. It really depends on um, if the scientific data convinces you or not. And sometimes some scientists just say it's not convincing enough. It's not um, distinguished enough. Um, as we, for example, um, have for years an ongoing debate about the rock hop penguin as well if the rock of a penguin is just one species or three species. So there might be something coming up soon as well. The research methods are getting um, better. The um, genetic analytics are getting more detailed. So we are getting into different um, sets, data sets we, we can approach uh, nowadays. And that gives us the possibilities to analyze the known world differently and more distinct and we can actually see here with the paper that got published with the idea of that of, of those um, gen 2 populations being different species we can actually follow 
the suggestions of the um, authors to see really that we have distinctions here in the uh, populations, which results in new in three new species splitting the Gen 2 from one into um, four species, which is quite amazing. Um, a very terrific fact is that um, the, the, the scientific names for them is um, very interesting because the um, the two existing subspecies um, or the, the Gen 2 in general is called Pygoscales papua and the one um, on the Falkland Islands is called um, Pygoscales papua papua while the one on the West Antarctic Penin or the Antarctic Peninsula is called uh, Pygoscales papua Ellsworthy. Um, the other I ones like those names. <laughs> they <laughs> they got new names. Um, the one uh, around the um, Kerguelen Islands is uh, called, oh God, um, Pygroscalis Papua Tainiata, and the one in uh, around South Georgia is called, oh God, let me check that. I don't want to <laughs> say that name wrong because that's actually a very um, interesting one. Pygroscalis Ponseti, because that was named after Sally um, Ponsa. That was a uh, Australian scientist that researched the wildlife um, in South Georgia and actually gave birth on South Georgia because she stayed there over winter and um, apparently mm -hmm. was pregnant and then just gave birth. So that's a, quite quite an honor. But um, however, yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a, um, yeah kind of a genomic research that just gets better and yeah we actually get more details out of so you said one of, one of the core definitions is they don't interbreed um so mm -hmm. if you if you take uh some from from one island and put them on the others they won't mate with the others um but isn't isn't that today also like do, don't they also do like genetic tests and see how that stuff diverges i mean there, there must be more methods than just putting putting two of them together and see if they like each other yeah, it's not so much um, putting them together. It's also um, checking are they f are they taking the opportunity to actually go to other colonies. Yeah. Um, they have also different features in their body structure, which is like for the untrained eye, not that obvious. Because a Gen two penguin next to the other Gen two penguin just looks like a Gen two penguin. It has has like a black head, black back, black um, flippers, has a white belly and a red orangey beak and red orangey feet. Um, if you are a trained scientist, uh, ornithologist, and you um, look really on detail onto those uh, Gen 2 penguins, you will find um, different features or features were differently um, uh, yeah, developed. And if you analyze that, you can find that that certain feature in that specific population. That's one of the reasons why they um, classify that it's just not only a population or a subspecies, but a certain species of the Gen 2 penguin, um, as well as, um, yeah, of course, behavioral um, features as well, genetic features. You have a number of, um, of features that come together here to make that suggestion, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so four new penguin, no, three new penguin species, where we thought it was only one in the, in the beginning, um, we will put the, the the study itself into the show yes. notes, and yes. possibly a, um, an interesting side note is that the the um, known Gen two species around the Antarctic Peninsula and the one in the Falklands is, is quite stable. Um, the two new additions, however, they show uh, an evidence of a decline in the population and the number. So they are actually um, is an evidence uh, present that yeah the gen 2 species newly discovered are just uh, in a decline yeah hmm okay that, well that actually adds something to the bucket list of all those who have this life goal of seeing all um penguin species in their life <laughs> so now you have three more it's yep. a pretty that's, amazing that's thing because <laughs> more things to put check marks the, next to <laughs> At least the Kerguelen Islands are actually not that easy to reach. It's not many trips going there, so it's even more isolated than 
South Georgia, Falkland Islands, and the Antarctic Peninsula. So that might add something to your bucket list then. That's more more adventure to come up. Okay, thank you so much, Henry, for telling us about the newly discovered Gen 2 pink penguin species and uh for everyone else if you want to get in touch or if you have feedback um or maybe you missed something that we didn't really cover let us know um get in contact mail us info at curiouslypolar.com or uh, find us online at curiouslypolar.com that's where you find all the other episodes we're on twitter at curiouslypolar and on insta as well until uh next week we'll be back with something more interesting i guess i think henry you have a lot of stuff in the, in the making so um yeah looking forward to see you again until then everyone take care so me till next week <laughs>